talking about the the world we're in how has that changed with fashion you mentioned uh retail stores how that was the thing and when it comes to a designer brand you got to be in nordstrom you got to be um in those department stores but oh my gosh how things have changed in the past five years but also 2020 yeah a lot has changed how are you feeling <laughs> I feel like that question is almost like an attack. Like, how dare you ask how I'm feeling right now? But how how are you? <laughs> right now, I'm really good. Um, I have chosen starting, I guess, a month after the pandemic started to see the silver linings of how this was great. Um, and that is not meant to offend or show lack of empathy for anyone who's lost someone or who's been sick or who has lost their income. There are huge systemic issues within our world right now that are affecting tons. I think for us as a company, we faced going out of business in the very first week. 70% wow. of our business evaporated. And wow. when I say evaporated, it was orders canceled, do not ship us, we will not pay for these. Um, and we had everything ready. It was like, the, the middle of the month was when we start shipping our wholesale partners. So right away, my brother and I had to say, okay, we owe it to ourselves. We put 15 years into this company and to our, you know, investor who went out on a limb to go outside of his comfort zone and, and invest in this company to give this everything we got. So what does that mean? It means we're a direct to consumer company. I'm the biggest influencer, uh, unpaid influencer of the company. And um, how do we sort of reframe and refocus everyone's attention on that? We had due layoffs and furloughs, which was horrific. Um, and then it was about getting back to business and staying alive because not only because of it's been 15 years and all that, but like we employ a lot of people. Like we don't want to contribute to, you know, what happens when, when things crash. So we, I'm really proud of us as a team. You know, we've never been tighter, more communicative, more, you know, business is up. And I'm, I'm so grateful because I'm like, who needs a bag right now? Right. Mm. But she's supporting the brand because I think we're giving her uh, a dose of reality, a dose of refreshing content and authenticity that I know is an overused word, but that she's like, oh, wait, Rebecca's in the bathroom on the floor taking her conference calls and doing homeschool. <laughs> oh, cool. You know, like if there's, there's a realness to what we're all experiencing that I, that I very much, you know, put out there. Right. What month was that? What week when everything hit the fan? March 13th. <laughs> Which coincided with the market just plummeting. So I'm sure that was just, I mean, I, I think that's when everything really hit the fan because people realized, oh, this is way bigger than we thought. Uh-oh. Yeah. And you mentioned, you know, when you're, when you're selling so much product to wholesalers and then, oh, they're not buying. I mean, that, I can't imagine what that was like. I mean, what was your first step? How did you guys, where do you go? So we took a look at the business and we said, okay, what do we realistically think we can do on our e-commerce size? And that's the size of the business. And let's project those numbers, looking at last year's numbers, looking at worst case scenarios. So minimally, can we meet last year's numbers? And what is the size of team and payroll that can support that? And mm -hmm. who, who doesn't relate to that business? So sadly, anyone on our wholesale team or logistics, any, anyone that was related to the business of wholesale, unfortunately, you know, we had to furlough them or let them go. Then we all took, uh, in some cases, well, my brother and I took the highest pay cuts, but then we had to do, you know, pay cuts so that we could right size the team and the salaries with the business because that was our only source of income. And then we said, okay, that, that layer is done. That was the worst part. Now look, let's look at our marketing. We were sending three emails a week pre-pandemic. Okay, let's send seven and see what happens. And then it was like, okay, how do we get new eyeballs to the site? Um, in this type of scenario, because the usual things might not be working. You don't have all these stores sort of acting as your, as your uh, window dressings. Um, and then we just had to get creative. And then it was content, right? It was like, well, we can't shoot anything. Well, I can shoot it all. Cool, let's go. So I became the, the subject of the emails, the top of funnel videos, not be, from an egotistical perspective. No, I love that. Well, because usually in your in your sphere, it would be more egotistical to be like, oh, I can't be that because our Rebecca Minkoff, that has to be so um, like not of the people. It's the brand, right? So I, I think it's the opposite when you say, okay, let's, you know, you look around, you see what everyone else is doing. You say, oh, I can do that too. 
I mean, I think that's also where the future is headed. You know, if you're not top of the top, Louis Vuitton, Gucci, it's like, what do you offer outside of luxury? And I think it's relatability and it's who you market to. Like it's the millennial woman, right? And you are one. So that, that's smart to use you. <laughs> yeah. And, and she responded. I think we always go with what she's responding to. So mm-hmm. she responded to the top of funnel video. She responded to me doing silly things online or my Instagram lives, my happy hours, you know, my COVID specific podcast. So I think she was like, I'm on my phone all day long. Give me, give me mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. What is your podcast called for people who want to check it out? Yes. It's called Super Women with Rebecca Minkoff. Pre-pandemic, it was really focused around telling incredible women's stories from the viewpoint of challenges and vulnerabilities and how they've overcome it. And I think so many women can feel alone. Mm -hmm. And this was a way that like even Katie Couric has challenges and even, you know, these luminaries that we think are perfect um, have their faults. Um, And then we did some COVID specific episodes around marketing, health, just so that you could get quick tips now that weren't Mm -hmm. necessarily about the woman and her journey. What do you think about the, uh, the not trend, because I guess they're real businesses, but the stitch fixes, the nollies of the world. I, I tried stitch fix for a little bit, but it was a little bit too like suburban mom. Um, but then I tried Noli, which is by Urban Outfitters, um, or their parent company. Um, and it was honestly really cool. And they had amazing pieces but then COVID hit and I was like it's probably not the best idea to be like sharing clothes with people um for people who aren't aware these are subscription clothing companies where you know you can have five pieces for 80 90 bucks a month and then you send back and keep what you want um where do you see the the future of that what are your thoughts on that you know I'm torn because I was doing subscription for my kids and it just got to be too stressful like Hmm. Uh, why didn't you like what was in it? Check on the box, all the things that, you know, and then it was like, oh, it is involved. If you don't put it back in the box by tomorrow, we're going to charge you. And I was just like, I got to stop the subscription boxes. It's too, like, I just want to be able to go to the store or go to the one destination I know my kids like, and they become extraordinarily picky and just buy that. So for Mm -hmm. me, subscription is nothing I've ever enjoyed, but I do see that if, you're not sure what to wear or how to style it together. And you can take advantage of a stylist, let's say on Stitch Fix, who gets to know you and your style. That's a great thing. Mm -hmm. But I don't know that, I I think for beauty it'll work, but for clothing, I just don't know because you don't need that much new stuff anymore, you know? Right, right. And it is hard, I guess, as a consumer too. Balance that every day. Okay, am I going to buy another five twenty-five dollar H and M t-shirts, and then they're going to disappear in a year, or am I going to go for something more quality? And I, I feel like I'm a good example of the the new consumer who, if I just have an IG story ad that pops up and something looks cute but also comfy, I'm like, bye, let's go for it. <laughs> so I feel like maybe it's it's almost like an effort that you have to put forward as a consumer to really think about what you're buying and to also think long term because hey it's probably going to be more pricey but maybe it lasts longer um and yeah I guess there's no question associated with that but how how do you deal with your own closet do you think about that all the time uh I'm thinking about it very heavily right now and I'll and I'll probably overshare um (laughs) we have been like we've moved seven times since March um just because just because. Um, And I've learned that I need a lot like, you know, my closet was, it's not big by New York City standards, but it was a place that I had a lot of clothing. Yeah. And I've been living with a 10th of that. And I'm like, wow, I really actually don't need all this stuff. And I guess to spur the purge of it, I had moths that I couldn't get rid of. So since I've been out of my house, I had um, a woman come in and like, treat everything and pack it up. And now it's in boxes. And I'm like, now I really don't need this stuff. I should probably donate it. So I think that um, we don't need as much as we think we did because we aren't going, I'm not going out like I was. I'm not getting dressed for the office like I was. Some days I'm in my workout gear all day. You know, I'm now investing in like, you know, uh, Spanx workout clothes. And I Mm -hmm. never thought that's something I would get excited about, you know, and then wearing them all day. So I think that it's changed and people 
obviously, like I still love the excitement about ordering something and, and receiving it, but I think I'm just more thoughtful about it.